one of the Hawaiian islands. This week's ocean talk is about the Pacific green turtle, which likes these islands quite a lot, just like me. So what do we know about the Pacific green turtle? Actually, first of all, that the name is wrong. It's just the green turtle, because it exists in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. Although the populations differ a bit, it's the same animal. They are reptiles and they live in the water. They feed in the water, they breed in the water, they sleep in the water. But they come to land in order to lay their eggs. The hatchlings, so the newly hatched animals, will find the way to the water, hopefully, and then they disappear. This disappearance act is called the lost year, which is rather poetic. Actually, it's not just a year, but how long it is, what they are doing, where they are going, and how they are living, we've got no clue. They re-emerge to the human's attention when they are juveniles. And then they eat all kinds of animals and algae and seagrass. But when they turn adults at age 30, 35, something like that, up to now we thought that then they become vegetarians, herbivores. Newer studies, which were performed in Australia's Shark Bay, actually showed that this might be wrong. The green turtle there were observed to feed up to one-fifth of their food on jellyfish and ctenophores. So how could we miss that all the time? Those gelatinous animals are more likely to be digested quickly. So they are underrepresented in the stomach content of the turtles. And stomach content is what we usually use in order to investigate the feeding habits of marine animals. So this guy or girl here is snacking on some algae. But when I was swimming or snorkeling with this animal, I was really impressed yet once again on how elegant they swim. They don't bump on the ground. They don't pop up due to the air in their lungs. They just drift in the swell. How can they do that? They regulate the buoyancy through their breathing, just like a good scuba diver. When they only want to dive in the shallow, like here, just like two meters deep, feeding, then they just take a small gulp of air and not a full lung. So with just a little bit air in their lungs, they are neutrally buoyant in the shallow water and they drift. If they want to dive deeper, for example to rest, they just take a deeper breath. And the average breath of the grown-up green turtles seems to be the size that they will just turn negatively buoyant at 19 meters depth. And that is their average resting depth. So that they don't pop up, that they don't drift, that they just loosely lie on the ground in order to rest. If they want to rest deeper, for example in 30 meter depths, then they do not take a normal breath, but a really deep breath. And with the deep breath, they will turn negatively buoyant at, as I said, for example, 30 meters. A deeper breath means that they have more air in their lungs. More air means more oxygen. And as a consequence, they can stay down in the water longer. And that's actually what they're doing. The deeper they're resting, the longer the rest takes. But they do not always rest in the water. They also sometimes rest on land. Is there a difference? Well, there's obviously in the temperature, but not in their oxygen consumption. Calculations and studies showed that in both cases, they use approximately 0 0.02 liters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per hour that they stay underwater or rest on land. So now you know why those huge animals are such gracious swimmers. And I hope you come back for some other topic to emotion.org.